Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Quan Nguyen, um, and he, his talk title is Spatial Integration of Imaging and Sequencing Data to Study Immune and Cancer Cells and Tissues. Uh, which is obviously, you know, spatial, uh, spatial trans or spatial single cell studies are super uh, exciting right now. Uh, so Dr. Nguyen is a senior research fellow and group leader at the Institute for Molecular Bioscience at the University of Queensland. He is the head of the Genomics and Machine Learning Lab. He's an academic leader of the University of Queensland sequencing facility and a chief investigator of the University of Queensland um, Genome Innovation Hub. And his lab's uh, main goals are to study um, cancer heterogeneity uh, in the context of the physiological, uh, the physiological uh, characteristics. Uh, and uh, let's see, um, he, uh, he is also developing uh, software as well for single cell and spatial data analysis. And a lot of that has become publicly available um, through their publications as well. So without further ado, um, Dr. Nguyen, uh, we look forward to your talk. Okay, so, um, yeah, um, do you see the screen sharing? Yes. Yeah, uh, so thanks very much uh, for the kind introduction and uh, also thanks the organizer, organizers for the invitation and for the fantastic effort to make this meeting happen uh, in this difficult time. So. Uh, uh, as, as you know, uh, the in vivo tissue environment is very complex and uh, there are many cell types that are distributed in an organized way and the uh, cell can interact uh, by signaling and uh, this complexity needs to be studied in the intact tissue sections. Uh, luckily, in vivo processes, they can be directly or indirectly uh, reflected by transcriptional regulation. So the idea is that we can use this huge transcriptional profile to discover important processes, and then we can validate it by other lower throughput technologies, but with the independent modalities. So today I will talk about technological and analytical approaches to study immune and cancer in tissue context. I will first focus on utilizing spatial data that we generated using 10x genomics visual data and uh, this is for the discovery part of it and then I will show how we can use different technologies to validate the discovery results from the spatial transcriptomics. As um, many of you may know, um, the spatial transcriptomics uh, has the potential to revolutionize tissue analysis because uh, we can measure thousands of genes in the same tissue without disrupting tissue structure. And the spatial transcriptomics like the Visium can generate both imaging pixel data. So like this one, um, millions of pixels with the three color channels. And it can also sequence thousands of genes with the spatial information. Then the challenge is how can we integrate both sequencing data and imaging data together to make meaningful biological discoveries. And this is gonna be the uh, first part of my talk about this data integration. So in our previous work, we showed the use of machine learning to integrate imaging data and sequencing data with poten uh, potential applications in digital pathology. And uh, you can find more information about uh, these methods uh, in the, the, our recent public um, uh, paper. But today's talk, I'm gonna focus on another uh, new method that uh, we want to uh, discover the new biology uh, using three types of information. That is the spatial information, morphological information, and gene expression information, all three types of data together in one model in order to uh, discover a uh, new biology. So often people overlooked the use of pixel information or the tissue morphology. And the idea is that the tissue morphology is also very informative for us to understand cells and tissue. So we developed a neural network model framework that allows us to integrate the molecular information with tissue imaging information. 
So for neighboring spots, uh, neighboring spots from the Visium data, we can select the neighboring um, uh, spots that have a similar DC morphology, and then we use a neural network model to transform it into feature vectors, which allow us to calculate the correlation between the morphological similarity, and this allows us to infer how similar the morphology between two spots are, and from there we can adjust the expression value of the tissue, uh, and, the, uh, of, uh, and then we can use the downstream analysis to analyze the adjusted values. I will go through some of the examples about how we can apply this idea to study the um, the, the tissue. So the first example is about uh, to identify cell types. So we show that by uh, uh, calculating the similarity between two different spots in the data set, we can then adjust the data in a way that the data can reduce the technical noise and can also increase the recovery of the zero expression values. As we all know, for single cell data and spatial data, zero expression values is one major problem. And after the adjustment, we performed clustering analysis and we showed that without the uh, adjustment, the clustering wasn't performed as well as with the uh, adjustment. And we concluded this by using six different uh, matrices to assess uh, the clustering performance. Uh, visually, we can see the clustering with the adjustment here is much cleaner compared to without the, uh, the, the adjustment. Next, uh, we also want to use the spatial information to improve the trajectory analysis that's very commonly used for single cell data. And we hypothesize that nearby spots are more similar. And we aim to answer questions that may not be feasible with this type of data before, such as the question about, can we model the dynamic process within a tissue section spatially and temporarily? So in order to answer such question, we decided to use a traumatic brain um, uh, mouse model. And uh, in this model, we injured a mouse brain and examined the cellular immune responses relative to the injury sites. In our re recent work, our spatial tranquilatomics analysis showed that within the dentate righteous region, in here, the presence of microglia, uh, there was a suppression of genes that linked to the neurotoxic phenotype of the astrocytes. And uh, there are more, neuron, uh, more neuronal cells, but less of the astrocyte uh, gene expression. So that is a, 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 a spatially driven um, analysis type. But uh, we wanted to ask a, a more challenging question. That is, from the spatial Jankiv-Tomish data, can we measure the process that by eyes uh, it is hard to detect? And can we uh, model both the space and time together in the tissue so that we can uh, answer some of the very interesting questions about, for example, cancer progression or immune responses. So we generated new data, uh, spatial Jankiv-Tomish data, and we aim to model the process of microglia activation. So the reason is that uh, we can uh, use the imaging to validate our model. And validation is a key part of any model uh, development. So with this option and this model, we can use imaging to validate our prediction. So what we want to predict here is how the microglia activation change relative to the damage site in the brain region. Now, we developed an algorithm called pseudo space time trajectory analysis, and this is to reconstruct the relationship between transcriptional states and spatial connection between clusters and subclusters within a tissue. So, we combine physical distances between spots and transcriptional distance to build a fully connected director's graph connecting clusters and subclusters together and infer a trajectory that link the different parts of the tissue in a pseudo time space concept. And by applying this algorithm, 
we could reconstruct a trajectory that's reflecting the spatial temporal change in increasing of the microglia activation and the density of the microglia relative to the uh, damage site in here. So we detected the gradient uh, corresponding to node from the node 6 to node 2, node 1, node 8, and node 5 uh, in here. So these are all uh, pseudo nodes in our, uh, um, our spatial data. But then from this single snapshot, we can already predict the gradient of changes in the uh, increase in cell numbers, also increase in the activation state. Now our next task is to validate it, to see if that prediction is valid or not. And as I mentioned before, this system of using imaging to assess the number of microglia as well as the states of the activation or resting is an idea uh, system for us to validate the algorithm. So in here, by imaging, we can measure both the time dimension and the space dimension. So for the time, we have uh, the data from the time zero as well as the control without the damage all the way to day 12. And for the spatial dimension, we have uh, the region in the uh, thalamus and then in the uh, hippocampus and then in the damage site. So we can reflect what we predicted from the single snapshot in here, that's the increase in microglia by time. And then they also increase in the microglia by space, and that's most most uh, clear in the day five. But we could predict that trend using a day three snapshot. So this is a, a, a very exciting result showing that using spatial data, we can really uh, build a, something like a pseudo time analysis in single cell data. But now we can add the spatial dimension into it, and it allows us to understand the tissue much more. And uh, uh, as, as a standard way of looking at the data, we can also find the cells and genes markers uh, that are relative to the damage site. And uh, we can also, by imaging, count the number of cells that change uh, by time, also by the spatial regions. And that uh, can help to confirm the model result. So, now that uh, we, we have a, a show that the pseudo trajectory concept works and we wanted to apply it to cancer context and we wanted to uh, model the cancer progression within the tissue. So this is a, a familiar 10x data set of the breast cancer. And uh, uh, we had a, a professional uh, breast cancer pathologist to annotate the uh, tissue for us. As you see, the details in the annotation from the standard pathological annotation is much less compared to what we can do uh, from the data in an automate, automate way. In here, each color shows one cell type, and in here, each big region like this uh, shows one type of cancer. So we have uh, two main types of cancer here. That's the ductal um, carcinoma in situ. That's are the one that's enclosed and they, they don't uh, spread. And then we also have an invasive carcinoma. So now our uh, aim is to see what are the relationship between the ductal cancer and the invasive cancer. And using the pseudo time uh, trajectory uh, analysis in the space, we can actually identify three branches of potential uh, uh, transition between the ductal to invasive state. Um, in one single snapshot of the tissue. So by three branches like this, I'm not showing here the result of the genes that drive each of the branch, but uh, we can really look into the detail of the pathway that make each uh, branch uh, different from the other branch. Now uh, I'm going to move to another type of application for this uh, data. So we can uh, not only look at the pseudo time space trajectory, we can also look at cell to cell interactions. And the spatial information is very useful for this because we know that nearby cells are more likely to interact. So in here we apply a pipeline that can look at the all possible ligand receptors on the tissue 
and then look at the spots that are next to each other. From there, we can determine the spatially co-expressed uh, ligand receptor uh, spots, and that will allow us to map it into the tissue which spots are most likely to interact. In addition to that, we also know the cell types of the uh, spot, then we can incorporate that cell type information with the ligand receptor co-local -lo expression and to make the prediction of where in the tissue the interaction most likely to happen. And this is an example of uh, the result from uh, our lab. So we study the basal cell carcinoma, uh, so it's the skin cancers, and uh, we performed the spatial uh, data uh, generation for this. And uh, after that, we applied the algorithm that I've just described before to uh, build a, a interaction landscape on the tissue of the, across all parts of the tissue. In here, yellow means the part that are more likely to have uh, the interaction happen. Now, uh, the next question would then still be, how do we validate that? And uh, our strategy to validate this is to use imaging and uh, single molecule in-situ hybridization. In this case, we use anascope and we develop a new analysis type that uh, allow us to automatically scan through the whole tissue to find the window with fewer than 100 cells and that have uh, the co-expression of both ligand and receptor at one time. And with this algorithm, we can reconstruct uh, the whole landscape of the interaction between any pair of ligand receptors. And by doing that, we now uh, are able to compare the result from an scope with the spatial transcriptomics by reconstructing the interaction landscape. And uh, these are two adjacent cells, uh, adjacent tissues, and we could see quite good consistency between the two data uh, types. Um, and uh, we further validated it by using uh, digital droplet PCR, which is uh, as sensitive as single molecule. And we could show that the uh, and they scope the results and the digital droplet PCR are very consistent. And uh, one more thing before I finish, that is uh, we can actually use the highly multiplexing protein profiling uh, at the single cell resolution uh, to validate the results from the discovery of the, the whole transcriptome-wide transcriptome uh, uh, analysis. In this case, we are using imaging mass cytometry uh, for measuring uh, the formalin fixed tissue, which are very abundant uh, and very uh, valuable for uh, clinical research. And we could not only determine the cell type in the tissue, we could also find the spatial location of those cell types. And from there, we can uh, extract a meaningful uh, biological patterns. Um, so, uh, in summary, I, I've described to you uh, the way that we can combine the technological advance with the analytical approaches to make the good sense of the spatial transcriptomics data, followed by the validation by independent methods. And uh, we uh, have uh, two new softwares for analyzing uh, spatial transcriptomics. All of these software are available for download and we are more than happy to collaborate with you uh, to, to, to make sense of the data. So uh, before I finish, I'd like to thank my fantastic team here, especially uh, Sao, Zhui, Ming and Andrew for driving the algorithm development and also thanks uh, Ali, Ati and Kali and Joe for uh, generating the data. I thanks my collaborators, thanks the patients and the funding bodies. and. Uh, um, that's it for my talk, and I'm more than happy to answer your question. All right. Thanks, Dr. Nguyen, for, for a very cool talk. So we have two questions from the audience. Um, the first one is, uh, is it helpful for identification of cell type to cluster the RGB matrix of um, HNC image directly? So if I understand, the question uh, correctly. So it is about using the uh, transferring algorithm to give a label for the clusters and then uh, use those information 
to incorporate into the cell to cell interaction um, so if, 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 that, if that, uh, is a question, then yes, I totally agree with that. And, uh, we actually have, uh, that incorporated in, in, in the pipeline. So one of the steps in the pipeline is to find the cell types in the tissue, and then we incorporate that cell type information into the, uh, ligand receptor co-expression, uh, to, and, 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 uh, find the most likely spots in the tissue that are interacting. Okay, um, let's see, the next question. Uh, the ligand receptor stuff is really interesting. Can you confirm that the validations are that the ligand and receptor are there, not the physical interaction? I'm a little uh, bit about Yeah, let, let me, let me uh, make sure that I understand that question uh, correctly. Um, for the validations, so confirm the validations uh, are that the ligand receptor are there, not the physical interaction. Okay, yeah, that's very, very in interesting um, question. So with the, um, with the RNA scope um, imaging, uh, we can confirm that at the subcellular level, uh, the specific location of the cells that's expressing the ligand and receptor and uh, um, that will allow us to confirm the, uh, the, the, the interaction. Um, in this case, we call it local co-expression. So it's very different to the concept of co-expression. That means that one cell uh, is expressing two ligand receptors at the same time. But in here, we are looking at the neighborhood of about 100 cells or, or, or fewer and see if this neighborhood has both ligand and receptor present. Um, we actually have a really cool um, uh, uh, figure for that. Uh, let me share the, the, the screen again. Um, so, so this is this is the uh, the, the physical location of uh, fewer than one hundred cells that have uh, the co-expression of both uh, ligand and receptor in this case. So at the single cell resolution, we can see that this cell here is pressing the ligand and this cell here is pressing the receptor and they are just next to each other. So it's very likely that they are interacting. Okay, um, I don't know if uh, any of the question askers want to follow up or anything. There's a final question here. Is it possible to identify cell subtypes using the spatial technology? Yes, so uh, the, the cell subtype is, uh, um, is similar to the, uh, to the single cell data. We can um, perform clustering and perform a, a cluster uh, annotation, um, including both a gener general cell type and cell subtype. Um, also, one thing that is quite different to the single cell data in this case is that uh, for one spot, uh, there may be uh, the existence of one to nine cells. So there is an algorithm that we can do the convolution to see within that spot how many cell types are there. It can be either discrete uh, classif classification or it can be a probability uh, based classification. Cool. All right. Um, I actually have a question. So uh, when I when I look, first looked at um, saw this technology, I was curious. I, I mean, maybe this is more of discussion, but I'm I'm curious whether you think there's any potential for this to be used in the clinic, or do you think it's still going to remain mostly a, a research type of tool? I, uh, for me, I'm I'm, I'm uh, maybe a bit uh, biased because I'm very excited about this technology. But I think that this is one of the technology that I think is cl closer to the clinical application than most of the other technologies that I'm uh, using at the moment. The reason is because, uh, uh, for example, here uh, we have uh, the direct uh, uh, correlation of the molecular signature and uh, and the, the the histopathological images this kind of data is now abandoned in the, in the clinics but uh, i think it is uh, underutilized it's very very underutilized so if we know how to combine the molecular data with the histological data to 
to produce some kind of uh, uh, the computer assisted tools to help the pathologist to uh, look at the tissue and tell uh, about the cancer cells or potential cancer immune cells interaction in the tissue. I think that would be quite uh, revolutionary. Um, and uh, I'm very hopeful that it will be real uh, one day, not too far from now. Okay, interesting.